Hello everybody and welcome to episode 31. Today we're going to finally be making the player able to die. Um, the first thing we're going to want to do is we've got a couple of new sprites we're going to want to add in. So I'm going to go up to sprites and uh, create a sprite, import, go to our folder, our ARPG assets folder, and I want to find S player dead. We definitely want this one. Um, you can see here the, the little animation I've created here is just sort of on the floor and we're just going to play this through once where his tail is up and then it just goes flop like that. That's 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 kind of his like dead animation. But that's not how he's actually going to die. S player dead we're going to call that. Um, we're going to create a kind of death animation where he spins around in a circle for a bit uh, and then collapses. Okay, So we've got S player hurt. Um, I'm going to duplicate this. Uh, and call it S player die. So we've got player die and player dead, right? So we go from die to dead. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, keep dragging the last frame to the front, so sort of moving it along um, until yeah, until it ends up like this. So starting from the right, going up, then left, and then facing down because we want the last frame to be facing down. Um, in theory, it's possible for us to have done this with just the the player hurt sprite. Oh, I can see I've actually done this the, done this the wrong way. <laughs> so this is something I do a lot. Um, it's okay. I can just do it like this. Change the names around. Whenever I duplicate something, and then you know, because I want to start with something as a base, so I duplicate a resource and then go to edit that resource. I forget to edit the duplicated one and I always edit the original instead <laughs> so I end up having to swap the names around. I do it all the time but uh, I can just swap the names around like that. So S player die should be the one that ends with you facing down like that. Um, S player hurt uh, starts left, down, right and up. Um, directions are relevant to each just because of how we've coded them. As I say it would be possible because they are the same data to have coded them in a way that just uses one sprite. But it's just easier. It just makes things easier for us if we just use two. All right. So just use two sprites, same origin and everything. Um, just slightly different orientations on the frames there. All right. Okay. Next up, we're going to make a new player state. So I'm going to come down to our scripts in our player states, and I'm going to create a new script called player state dead. Let's uh, get rid of this nonsense. Let me break this down maximize this. So the first thing I'm going to do in the state, um, I guess technically unnecessary, but just feels logical to do, is just set our speeds to be zero. I say it's unnecessary because we're not actually going to be processing them in this state, and by the time we're done with this state, we're going to be leaving the room anyway. But, you know, it just it feels sensible. If we're going into a state where we're not moving, set the speeds to be zero, okay? Um, just to be consistent. So if just arriving in this state, uh, we're going to check to see basically if either of our sprites are um, set, uh, either being you know the die uh, the die sprite or the dead sprite. So if sprite index does not equal uh, s player die, and uh, sprite index does not equal s player dead, because that's going to tell us. Like if our sprite is neither of these two things, then it means it was like in the we were in the free state or some other state. Okay, we're only going to have these um, particular sprites used in the dead state. So if either one of them is currently active, that means uh, we've been in the dead state for at least one frame. Uh, if that's not true, then it means we've we've only just gotten here. Okay, so we're going to update the sprite to be uh, sprite index equals s player die because that's the first one we want to go to. Uh, image index to be zero, and image speed to equal 0 0.7. So now you can see why it's important. We only do this once. Uh, we only do it once when we arrive in the state. Um, set our sprite accordingly, set our frame to be zero, and uh, oh, sorry, image speed to equal 0 0.7. Uh, an image speed of 0 0.7 might feel a little bit specific, and um, it's because it is. Um, <laughs> um, this will be the result of some manual iteration. It's kind of a magic number, just because we. Um, how this works is we're going to set our image speed to be 0 0.7, and it's going to decrease like over time as we spin around. So our player is going to sort of spin around um, playing this sprite. Um, and 15 was a bit high, so we started at like 0.7, and it's going to slow down over time um, until it gets slower and slower and slower, and then eventually just sort of like 
like at a very low speed finishes on this one and then we cut to the um, dead animation okay um, so that's how it's going to work um, and f for whatever reason when I was first coding this image speed 0.7 seemed a reasonable place to start and provided a decent result you can play around with those numbers um, to do uh, to create whatever effect you want all right um, next up animation ending this frame and so in order to check that I'm just going to see if image index plus image speed is going to be greater than our image number um, if it is we know we've come to the end of a animation loop uh, and then I'm going to say if uh, bright index equals s player die and if that's true so that we're on the dying um, we're, we're, we're on the dying animation that means we've, we've completed a loop we've completed one spin right uh, image speed is going to equal max zero image speed minus 0.03 okay so we're just going to reduce the image speed a bit and then uh, we, we keep doing that every every loop right but if image speed is less than 0.07 so we're getting really really slow again these are all magic numbers here really they're just you know it's, it's the only way we can really write this whole behavior um, you can make these numbers be whatever you need them to be image index uh, is going to equal zero uh, sprite index is going to equal s player dead and image speed is going to equal one all right so then that's going to pass us through to the dead animation where our tail is just going to flop down all right so if this is not true uh we're not in the die sprite then we must be in the um dead sprite right uh, if we're in the dead sprite um and also the animation is going to end this frame uh image speed can be zero uh image index it's going to equal image number minus one, which means we're going to move ourselves to the last frame of animation. Global dot target x is going to equal minus one. Global dot target y is going to equal minus one. This is just resetting our spawn position so that we don't like you know um, respawn in the room and end up in a, a position based on like you know the last room we went to. And then we're going to room transition. Um, trans type dot slide our village okay we're just gonna create a room transition to send us back to um, the starting room which is our, our village so no matter where we die we're just gonna go back there um, we're also gonna restore our health and stuff like that but we're gonna do that in somewhere else okay that's pretty much the whole um, dead state all right that's just controlling the playing of that animation and then it's going to send us to this particular spot now we need to sort of jump back a step and make it so that we can actually enter this state in the first place all right we have the state that will play this animation through how do we actually get there well we set up all of that in the hurt player script really we had uh, this else space here uh, where if our health uh, happens to not be greater than it's zero after we've taken some damage uh, we can kill the player so all we have to do uh, is simply write um, state no sorry we want to write with o player because this is generally run by an enemy isn't it right so with o player state equals player state dead semicolon okay so that's going to make it so that when the enemy hits us if our health is less than zero um, we enter the dead state now we want to jump forwards a couple of steps so after we played through this animation um and we've about we're about to die we need to um make it so our health recovers okay we've already got a room transition that's going to happen while we're in the dead state so we know we're going to leave the room so what we can do is go to o player um add the room end event and i'm going to check to see if state equals player state dead Okay, if our state is player state dead and the room is ending, it means, you know, we died and the room transition has happened, okay? There's no other way those circumstances can happen. So if that's the case, health equals health max. All right, um, let's maximize that so you can see that. That's simple, okay? If we're in the dead state, room's ended, set our health to be our maximum health again. All right, now that would be everything. Um, but there's <laughs> this is generally a thing when you have a dead state you'll find that there's possibly a few behaviors in your game 
where uh, we need to make an exception for if the player is dead, okay? Because <laughs> uh, the player being in the dead state is the closest the player comes to not existing anymore, and so things need to stop interacting with the player or um, stop relying on the player or stop changing things about the player, especially if other things can affect the state of the player, because then it's possible that things can bring the player back to life or um, or, or do other things that interrupt with the, the state. Uh, in a way we don't want, okay? Um, generally, it's the, the thing you'll have to check the most. In PokePoke, I think I literally have a script, um, or a function rather, that um, checks to see if O player is in the dead state or not, just to save me writing it so many times. It becomes quite a common thing, um, so you might want to do something like that as well. Um, you'll find you check this, if like state equals player state dead uh, for the player, uh, fairly often if you're anything like me. So. There's only two places where we kind of need to make this change um, in the game we have at the moment. I want to go to Room Exit, first of all, in the Step Event. Um, and here where we see, like, uh, if um, if the player exists and uh, we're touching um, a Room Exit, um, you know, we, we, we do all this stuff. Um, but if the, if the player does exist um, and we come through to here, I want to do an AND here, and I'm going to write AND. Uh, o player dot state does not equal player state dead, right? Um, because we don't want this to happen um, if uh, if the player is dead. So if the player having to die on a room exit, for example, right? Um, because you'll notice down here when we do this, we do with O player state equals player state transition, and that's going to bring us into a, a wholly different state, and that's going to confuse things, and I don't even know what the outcome would be, but it wouldn't be something we want. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm going to copy this because we're going to need it again. Um, I think, have I written that right? I've got all the brackets right. I think so. Okay. Um, we want to next go to O transition. Uh, which I think does a similar thing in the begin step. Yeah, okay, so we do a, yeah, the begin step with O transition. Um, and this is important because even our dead state sends us to O transition. So we, we start a room transition. Um, this would actually bring us immediately back out of the dead state by just beginning to progress the transition. Um, this is the state that we use to sort of move ourselves from one room to the next. And when we step on an exit, we go into this state and we like walk right, okay? Um, it's kind of duplicated actually, I'm not sure why we have it here and we have it in room exit, but I'm sure it's, uh, instead of questioning that code, what I'm going to do is just make sure we have that exception built in here. So I'm going to say, um, with O player, instead of just doing state equals state transition, we're going to do uh, if state does not equal player state dead, state equal player state transition. All right, we don't want to do this. Uh, if we're in the dead state, okay? So we want to send ourselves to the transition state unless we're already in the dead state, in which case we can just stay in that state. That's absolutely fine. We don't need to move anywhere or do anything, um, and no transition can handle the rest. Um, that should basically be everything. Um, so let's actually try that out now. Uh, let's run the game. Let's get hit by our slime a handful of times. Which he needs to take us to zero. There we go. Two zero or less. We spin, we stop. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it worked. Only um, you'll notice our, our origin is not correctly set for um, the 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 dead sprite. So we spin, 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 spin. Plunk. We, we we kind of fall down there. So we can quickly fix that. Go to sprites. Uh, play a, S player dead. Um, don't remember off the top of my head where that origin should actually be. It looks like it should be like somewhere. Um, where is it? It's there. Let's just drag it down, like pro probably somewhere like there, like in the middle, middle bottom, uh, maybe up like a pixel, so it looks like we come down a little bit. Um, you can just play with that until it looks looks how you want it to look. Okay, origins are important. Who knew? So let's get hit a couple of times. There we go, and then plump, flump, and then we fade out. Okay, and there you go. Simple death animation brings us back, heals us back to full. Obviously a bit more meaningful if we die in another room or whatever, and it's not just like restarting the room. Do we have any slimes in here? We've not put any slimes in here yet. Uh, but yeah, it would work nonetheless. It's going to send us to that room, I'm sure you all 
understand how that works. Okay, um, that's getting the player to die. So thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you guys next time. A huge shout out to all my Patreon supporters who funded this series, and a big shout out in particular, and in no particular order, to the following. Tranquil, Havig, Elizabeth and Landon Brown, Gage Hunter, The Game Guru, Julian Cropley, Darnell Braxton, Michael Kolich, John Kenai, Stephen Chenier, Borgia MK Ultra, Azrael Studios, It's Matt Poor, Rachel Stewart, Arctix, Feral Princess, John C, Team D, Jordan Hake, Dalvor, Vacants, Phil Keen, Pong Pong Zhao, Jason Welch, Andrew Gilbert, Reva, the Holtzman Effect, Kaiser Ho, Boris the Wizard, Zach Collett, Figgy, Cabbage Pants, Yoram Pater, Leo, Scott Matthews, Samir and Yai Legaglo, Rene Dam, Rupinda, Hare, Dark Rider 0318, Jason, Relentless Rex, Bertie T, Daka Dondigo, Robert Churches, Jonathan, Bowser the Dog, Scott E. Wing, and Max M. Thank you all so much, and thank you for watching, and I'll catch you all next time.